Hello folks, this is Steve A.D. Poyal. We're waiting for the cold, cold, cold air to arrive tonight. Snow's gone. Well, there's little patches here and there. Now, you know nothing in this episode is a promotion nor is it a recommendation. <clears throat> I'm just having fun. Sleepy computer. There's this one here. U.S. arrest. Scattered spider suspect. Linked to telecom hacks. I wonder how much prison time they'll get. <clears throat> Person didn't follow up on anything. You'll see. What an idiot using the first four letters of his name. What does that mean? So, Scattered Spider is a known group, but they're not, they probably never have met each other face to face. <clears throat> U.S. authorities have arrested a 19-year-old teenager linked to the notorious Scattered Spider cyber crime gang who is now charged with breaching a U.S. financial institution, a bank. Some foolish person at the bank believed the phone call he was getting from a 19-year-old pipsqueak voice. And two unnamed telecommunications firms. For all I know, it could be my ISP or a telephone company. So here's the nice part. <clears throat> you know, he said, uses part of his name, Remington Goy Ogletree, also known online as Remy breached the three companies' networks using credentials stolen in text and voice phishing messages targeting their employees. You know, my bank occasionally sends me an email and says, remember, we're never going to call you on the phone and ask you for anything like a password. We're a bank. We don't do that. If we think we need to talk with you, we ask you to log into your account at the bank so that you know where you are and who you're talking to. You got that? Now think about what that said. Breached the three companies' networks using credentials stolen in text and voice. Call them on the phone. Phishing messages targeting their employees. He also impersonated the victim's IT support departments. So he called up and he said, Oh, I'm your support department here in the bank. Yeah. In calls des designed to pressure the employees into accessing, now here it is, <clears throat> phishing sites where they were asked to enter their usernames and passwords. The person inside the bank, or whatever, is getting a message, SMS, here's a link, click on it. And it kind of looks like it's one of their own company's links, only they didn't read it too closely, because somebody used a URL shortener. So they click on it, because the guy's saying, log in, I need you to log in so we can... And they think they're logging into some other part of their own company. But it says a phishing site. So they're doing it through their web browser or whatever. They have no idea where that is. I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute. 
So they log into what they think is another part of their company using their user ID and password, but that site they're doing it just handed it to the bad guy. Now he can impersonate them, log in, and do what he wants by going to the main page of the, whoever the bank or whatever it is, just like that employee could. Got it? You got the picture? Remington Goy Ogletree. Don't you think that sounds like a unique name? In my lifetime, I've actually known one person with a family name, Ogletree. It was when I was young. Remington. Remington. Springfield, Mass. Oh, oh. Western Mass News. Gun factory in operation for 200 years is set to close. Remington Arms Company. I'm not promoting anything. I-L-I-O-N New York, a gun factory in upstate New York with a history stretching back to the 19th century is scheduled to close in March. This is in 2023. Rem Arms, the current version of Remington Arms, will close its facility in the Mohawk Valley There's a road in western Massachusetts called the Mohawk Trail. Is that right? I've traveled a lot. Mohawk Trail. Claremont, Mohawk Trail State Park, Claremont, Massachusetts. Mohawk Trail State Forest. Okay, I'm not nuts. <clears throat> Remington, the country's oldest gun maker, began making flintlock rifles in the region in 1816. Rip Van Winkle's up that way. The factory site in the village dates to 1828. Oh, I can't believe I did that. The radio came on to remind me to take my medicine. Let's continue. Hang on. This is the other place that comes to mind. In 1848, E. Remington and Sons purchased gun-making machinery from the Ames Manufacturing Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts. The company went on to supply the U.S. Navy with its first breech-loading rifle and the U.S. Army with rifles during the Mexican-American War. I think I knew somebody that worked in the factory there. Excuse me for all 
Okay, that one there is the original factory in New York, according to that. It looks like something that could be down the road there. It's the same era. Do you think they all copied each other? <clears throat> so I guess the big thing was that the rifle barrel was rifled, which means there was a spiral inside to spin the slug as it, and then it would stay more accurately flying. Centrifugal force. Despite not winning the match, he proceeded to make barrels to meet the growing demand for flintlock rifles in the Mohawk Valley. All right, so I, I know the Mohawk Trail. So where's the Mohawk Valley? Utica, Schenectady. Okay. General Electric had a big transformer play, plant in Schenectady. I knew somebody who worked there. I've met a lot of people in my life. So anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, so I thought, why don't we do a Google search? Remington Goy Ogletree. Known online as Remy. Now I'm looking at that name and I'm going, okay, I can see that Remington could be a personal name. Well, where'd the G-O-Y come from? That's Yiddish, Hebrew. Yiddish, Hebrew. And it means somebody who's not Jewish. The Goys, Goyim. Goyim is the plural in Hebrew. Goy, way, way, way back at the beginning of Hebrew, actually meant a first-class Jew. You know, very religious. And somehow along, remember I spent time in Israel, somehow along the road, it got completely reversed. Okay, so they say that they know about it from Bleeping Computer, but then I found this one, the second one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute, what's the search? Look at this. Somebody on Substack has written an article three years ago, three hours ago. China automakers pivot to hybrids of Europe. But then it says, but then it's just talking about this, which got nothing to do with China automakers. Do you think the search engine is schizophrenic a little bit? What have these others got to do? New core annual report? Just because they pick out somebody's name, Remy? What's this one? Tag a friend and let them know you're... What? Seton Hall? Somebody else named Remy Spencer? Do you think the AI is, is kind of desperate to try to figure out what it is it should be showing me. The gift of sisterhood. We reminisce. Look at this. Look at this. We, now there's a typo. R-E-M-I space N-I-S-C-E-D and the search engine keyed in on that to show it to me. And they're spending billions on it? Let's get back to business. So I saw this one here, the second one, databreaches.net. Well, that's what it's about. <clears throat> so I went there. Now let me show you something. This is why I'm doing this. I think I've been to this site a long time ago. So he's that's, a, that's in line with what the bleeping computer is saying. This was posted 
today by whoever is running this site and he does these kind of things like Bleepy Computer does. Bleeping a Bloomberg Law reports that an accused teenage hacker who was arrested last month in California is suspected of being a member of Scattered Spider, according to several people familiar with the matter. And there it is, Remington Goy Ogletree, exactly known Remy, was arrested on November 4th on a warrant from New Jersey. So probably the bank was in New Jersey. That's a guess. Now, wait a minute. He was released on unsecured bond of $15,000 with conditions. You break into a bank and they trust you to show up in court without... Let me show you. Unsecured bond. Let me show you. An unsecured bond in court is a written agreement between a defendant, presumed to be innocent, and the court, the judge, where the defendant promises to appear in court on a specific date and time. The defendant only needs to pay $50,000 if they fail to appear in court. Unsecured bond. Un oh, wait a minute. Unsecured bonds are less common and are usually only available for minor crimes or for defendants with little or no criminal history. Now, wait, no, no, wait, no, wait a minute. He broke into a, a bank and telecom country and there's no big deal? I wonder who the judge was. Anyway, further down in this article, I saw something interesting. First thing I noticed is, you see these gray areas? I suspect those are not direct quotes from something. But those are AI generated. You know, AI is a big thing now. And the reason is, is that as, as I read them, it says here that Ogletree accessed and stole confidential data, including data that was later posted for sale on the dark web, and at times used company services to facilitate theft of cryptocurrency from Unwood, and they let the guy go home. As a result, victims have suffered over $4 million in losses, but he only has to pay 50000 if he doesn't show up in court. Oh, he's got that as pocket change. According to Apple Records, is that one of the companies? Telecommunication? I don't know. Ogletree, iCloud account was subscribed by and they, Florida, phone number ending in Airbus, and there's a rental apartment that they were there a couple of years. Nobody checks anything. So, watch. So this is trying to summarize something else, and some of it kind of sounds like gobbledygook. And then down here, I <clears throat> oh, this is the bond thing right here. 50000 He must not violate any federal, state, or local law while on release. How do they know? They're going to put an ankle bracelet on? Wait a minute, are they gonna, did they take his computer away? <clears throat> I mean, it isn't like he went out and robbed the bank, physically. 
You must cooperate with the collection of DNA sample if authorized. You must immediately advise the court blah, 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 in writing before any change of address or phone number. It must appear in court as required and surrender to serve any sentence in both. Executing an unsecured appearance bond. No co-signer. No one else is responsible. <coughs> so he must be emancipated. <coughs> Pardon me. Report to pretrial services as directed and advise them immediately of any contact with law enforcement personnel, including but not limited to any arrest, questioning, or even a traffic stop. Oh, they're watching. They're trusting him to be honest. But this is the thing that was United States District Court, District of New Jersey, United States of America versus Remington Goy Ogletree, a.k.a. Remy, criminal complaint. And then they go through all these details. Let me show you. So we know where the other guy got the stuff from. See, it's right here. They're capitalizing Ogle as the name. And I was scrolling down through this. My eyes are blurring for some reason. I was scrolling down through this, and I noticed something. They're going through phishing. Phishing is a cyber attack technique where the attacker sends a message to lure the recipient into clicking on a link. Clicking on a link. Often to a website or program. And then provides sensitive information. Log in with the user ID and password and you don't know that it's immediately fit sending it to the bad guy because it's not really where you think it is. Or download malicious software onto the recipient device. Now this fits in. Then I get to this paragraph. I love this paragraph. This is why I'm making the video. I love this paragraph. Employee dash one, who was not located in the state of New Jersey at the time, clicked the link and provided his telecom business. See, they don't want to say the name of the business. There were two of them. One was in the States, one was in Europe. Telecom business, substitute whatever the name, like your ISP's name. Username and password, believing he was following the instructions of telecom businesses' IT support. User, employee one's username and password were then harvested, that's what I told you, and used to access the telecom's business network, logging in as though he was that user which is authorized to log in. You follow it? Now watch. The domain used to harvest the employee's credentials was hosted on IP address. Now there's four parts to it. This is known as IPv4. And they refer to it thereafter as the 21 IP address because it ends in dot 21. According to records provided by the company hosting, now pay attention to that sentence. According to records provided by the company hosting that address on the internet, that address is hosted on a server located in New Jersey, which might be the reason why, not because the bank was there, but because he used that as the, don't know, we're trying to guess. Now, Watch what I do. Let me repeat that sentence. The domain, that's a key word. 
Spectrum.com or Spectrum.net, they use both, is a domain name. IBM.com is a domain name. WellsFargo.com is a domain name. Okay? And they have IP addresses. The domain used to harvest the employee's credentials was hosted on IP address 167.172.131.21. According to records provided by the company hosting that address, so, I mean, you could go out to cloud services, Amazon, Microsoft, in a sense, there's nothing unusual here. He just rented it. He just rented it so he'd have an address. They don't ask what you're doing there. You're storing data. You lied to them. Now watch. 167172. There's something called ping. P-I-N-G. It sends a special kind of packet to the address if it can find it. And if the server at the other end, the computer, has the ping response facility turned on, which it usually does, that's Google replying to my ping, 8.8.8.8. .8 it replied immediately, I'm here. That's what a ping is. It doesn't do any more than that. Actually, you can do a little more, but 167172 ping 167 dot 172.13121. I'm all messed up today. 131.21. Okay, we're going to ping the server that the 19 year old Remington. Goy Ogletree was running a program on making it look like a website that looked just like the guy he was fooling. So let's, for because my ISP is Spectrum, let's just say that he was talking to somebody at Spectrum telling him he's IT support and we need you to log in. I'm IT support Spectrum. We need you to log in. And when he goes there, it looks like it. But anybody can write a page that looks like that. All he did was click on the link that was sent to him. He doesn't, it's just numbers. And it pings back. It answers. Just like Google did. It answers. So it's still there. Now watch. According to, this is the federal prosecutor writing this, according to records provided by the company hosting that address, the service located in New Jersey. And you saw I pinged it. Now watch something. NS lookup. I can't make that bigger. NS lookup, not ping. NS lookup. Now, what what address did I say was Google? Eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. What does it say? Server DNS dot Google. That's the address for the D. Domain name service of Google. I use it. I, I consider them, they know where everything is. 
I don't use my own ISPs, DNS people. I use Google and another one. And then it says the name of the domain is dns.google understood.com. And it, all right, it actually told me the name of the company. Who owns it? NS Lookup 167, 172, 131, 21. Google has no idea who that is. Can you believe that? The, what is the first part is saying, Google DNS is responding to my request, the NS Lookup. And then it says for the second part, DNS Google can't find 167, 172, 131, 21. Non-existent domain. So it's not registered to anybody, but it's there. Just as a test earlier, what I did is, you know, I have a WAN modem in the other room. There's a special kind of wide area network modem. My local network here talks through that to my spectrum.com ISP. And when my stuff goes out to the internet, there's a four-part address, just like I showed you here. And what I did is I did an NS lookup on that. Did it name me specifically? No. What did it tell me? It says it belongs, it's a domain segment that belongs to Spectrum.com. So if I take, so when, when I go to like YouTube, the address they see is the WAN address assigned by my ISP to my household, my connection. And no, it isn't detailed down to my name, but it is known to be owned, those, that address is known to be owned by Spectrum. So what's going on here? Who are they? What do they do? You know, right? And it's right there in this legal document that was filed yesterday or whatever, today. And it pings back, but Google can't tell me who it is. Can't tell me who owns it. Really? I thought Google knew everything on the internet and the web. Excuse me for repeating myself. Don't you think this is kind of funny? And in no way am I suggesting that whoever has a server at 167, 172, 130, 120, they just mind their own business. You rent. Right? So if you want to, If you have a little bit of knowledge, and I'm, you know, I'm getting old, I'm rusty. I can look at an article like this and I can track it all the way down to actually pinging the site he was using to fool people and steal their passwords and user IDs. Wonder what else is out there. You know what? The government should use that as a honeypot. You know what that is? They make it look like they're cyber crime friendly and then they figure out who you are and they come and arrest you. Well, I don't know why they didn't name them and nobody knows who they are. Are they actually a honeypot? There are such things. You understand honeypot, right? You want to see what kind of insects are in your garden? Well, this is the equivalent in Hope you enjoyed the little fantasy journey here.
based on current cybercrime news. Steve A.B. Foyle, just having fun, saying see you in 73.